Now to our new feature, which we've called... Ask an Expert. <laughs> where we bring great... It's a, it's a great little sing-song there, isn't it? We bring in experts across a wide variety of subjects that you at home get to ask questions to. And today we have financial planner Royden Schotter of Echelon Advisors. Welcome, Royden. Hi. Now, what I want to know first is who should see a financial advisor and what can you do for us? Yeah, most people should probably engage an advisor at some point. Um, a lot of people should see one sooner than they think. Um, invariably, there's something I can do to help or guide or assist almost anyone. Um, we deal with a lot of big picture issues first, then we drill down into detail. So we might end up talking about things like insurances, um, mortgages, debt repayment, KiwiSaver, investment, savings, but even more broadly, people's businesses and uh, even property, property right. portfolios. And things like how much coffee I'm drinking and I shouldn't be drinking so much because it's costing me a fortune. So how do I know if a financial advisor is good or not? Okay, um, it's like any profession. You really want to look to their qualifications. Mm. Do you have like certificates on the wall? I don't, lots of people do, um, but the qualifications are there mm -hmm. and um, you know, they took a long time to get. Um, invariably, I think it's um, worthwhile understanding whether your advisor, the person you're sitting in front of, if they're aligned or tied to a certain provider, um, that's important for understanding whether their advice is going to be limited in any way. Um, ideally, you want more tools rather than less. Okay, or selling you a certain product because you're affiliated with somebody. Absolutely. Oh, I see. So what sort of thing can I expect when I go to my financial advisor for the first time? What can I expect at the first meeting? First meeting... In Always going to be a conversation, big one, um, all about you and your world. Uh, it's no good giving advice in isolation. You've really got to um, get a, as best understanding as you possibly can about someone. Otherwise, it's harder to help them. How they live and my love of coffee, for instance. Absolutely. Yes, because yeah. we have to factor things like that in. We really do, trust me. Uh, so I mean, you do something a little bit different too with your financial advising, don't you? You've got a service called, what is it financial modelling that you do? Financial modelling is just the words I use to describe it. So did you come up with it yourself? Yes, I, uh, I wrote my own software. I did look around and, and try and find something that was going to work for me. Um, but I, uh, I made it from scratch, it's just an Excel, I'm not a developer or, or anything like that, but it, it works really well, that's the important thing. And, and what it does is we, we fill it up with people's information and it draws pictures of their world and how their life may or may not play out. So when you say pictures, it's actually a graph? Or it's, a, it's a graph, yeah. That it's helps, a couple of graphs. That helps people who can visualise things so much easier. So well, I, I take it like a mountain or something and that's me earning my money and that's me spending my money. That's exactly, that's exactly how it is, yeah. Do you factor in things like the coffee that I drink? Is, is, is it all the lifestyle things that go in there? There are other people. There's groups like Enable Me that do a really good job mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. Um, I do have some affiliation with them. I work a little bit more big picture and leave the fine detail budget stuff to other people unless my somebody mortgage. wants to... Yeah, exactly. You're looking at things like that. Absolutely. My property. So why is it important to map it all out? Look, there's two main reasons why the modelling and the mapping is important. Uh, the first one is that people's, once they have that information, they make different decisions. Uh, once you've got a different view of your world, uh, we'd like to think you make better choices. The second one is more about navigation. And if I can use a, a, a nautical analogy, if I'm heading out for Fiji, um, then if I don't know whether I'm on track or off track, I'll end up sailing around the South Pacific. So the modelling's a bit like that. I love that analogy because I'm a sailor and that absolutely rings home to me. Very, very, very wise words. Now, some commentators suggested that maybe the financial literacy of New Zealanders could be improved. What do you think about that? OK. Um, Kiwis are fabulous self-starters and they're really big on their DIY. So um, it's changing. Um, but often there's been a, a bit of a why gap. People didn't know why they needed advice. Mm. And then, of course, the assumption is that, well, it must be very expensive. Yeah. So, uh, but what, with the modern pressures everyone's facing today, no one's got any time left to do anything. So what um, I think people are doing now is after a quick bit of research on the internet, they're starting to realise there's actually just too much to know. Yes. And better to maybe seek some help. And this is where you get the experts in to help. That has been enlightening. Thank you so much. Great advice, Royden. And if you want to find out more, make sure that you head along to the Echelon Advisors website. Now, next week on... Ask an expert. I love that jingle. We'll be joined by Anita Williams from Vinca Design with an expert advice on wedding dresses and attire. So start asking your questions now on our Facebook page or go to our website as well.